Yes, uh, hi. Uh, so this is work I've, I've done uh, during my sabbatical. Uh, this is joint work with Tom Cantor. And uh, it's about knowledge graphs. And uh, knowledge graphs are uh, everywhere. Uh, we have seen a lot of works utilizing them at this conference and in this session. And they have been uh, used in a broad range of uh, scenarios. And one property of them is that they tend to focus on uh, prominent entities that are uh, in some way considered globally important. And one problem with that is that it rules out a lot of entities that we interact with on a daily basis. As a motivation scenario, imagine the following conversation happening between a user and a digital assistant. The user says, I would like to get some new strings for my guitar. Uh, agent, okay, would that be your electric guitar or the acoustic one? Would be the electric one. All right, I can repeat your almost an order or three months ago, or you can go by the music store on your way to the dentist appointment this afternoon. So, um, there's a couple of things to notice here, but uh, one is uh, that it understands what uh, the user means by his guitar, and uh, it's ambiguous because apparently this user has uh, more than a single guitar, and then it asks a clarification question, and then it uh, proposes the course of action. So, uh, what I want to highlight with this, that this conversation could not have happened without having some personal information. And I would go as uh, far as uh, making the following claim, that it's very difficult to imagine a truly personal assistant without having access to structured personal information. So, uh, this work is about uh, introducing the concept of a personal knowledge graph and uh, with an emphasis on how it is different from general purpose knowledge graphs. And I want to acknowledge that we are not the first ones thinking about uh, personal knowledge graphs. There is really deep work on that. But most of that has focused on specific application scenarios or specific uh, use cases. And instead we want to um, introduce this concept and uh, identify a number of uh, open research challenges uh, from the perspective of how it is different from general knowledge graphs. All right, so personal knowledge graph is a resource of structured information about entities that are of personal interest to the user. And on the right hand side you can see a small illustration uh, where the user is in the center and that is one uh, differentiating characteristic that everything in this personal knowledge graph has to be directly or indirectly connected to the user. And that gives uh, a rise to this special spider web layout. And another uh, characteristic is that uh, some of these entities may exist in external uh, resources. If you look at the electric guitar, for example, uh, it can uh, uh, have an entry in an e-commerce catalog or in a domain-specific knowledge graph, uh, so in more than one external resources, and some uh, of these entities may not have uh, an entry uh, as well. So, uh, we identify four main groups of uh, associated problems, uh, knowledge representation, semantic annotation of text, population and maintenance, and integration with external sources, and in the next uh, four slides, I will uh, uh, state some of the differences and uh, the research question uh, guiding that direction. All right. So, um, knowledge graphs are organized according to some knowledge model or schema. So there is a typically uh, controlled vocabulary of possible relationships. And uh, the personal knowledge graph is not different in that respect. Uh, what is one main difference is that um, what gets stored in there. Um, so, uh, an implicit requirement for uh, general knowledge graphs is uh, entity and relationship has to have a well established consistent. Uh, on the other hand, um, in a personal knowledge graph, um, in 
ingredients of uh, the dinner, I'm planning to cook tonight, that will be something perfectly sensible to store there. Another thing is the focus on personal relevance. So about the movie, I'm not interested in the list of uh, cast members, but uh, uh, it, it may be important to store what I thought about that movie, how I rated that, what were the things I liked and disliked about it. So it's not necessarily a different uh, uh, representation, but uh, what should be stored there. The second topic is about uh, semantic annotation of text. It's uh, commonly known as entity linking, so given a text identifying mentions of entities and linking them to the entry in the knowledge graph. And this typically involves uh, the three main steps, mention detection, entity disaggregation, and real detection. And uh, these approaches heavily rely on existing knowledge graphs. And that brings out the first difference that uh, some of these entities may not have any digital presence. So my grandma, for example, doesn't have uh, any social media presence. She's not mentioned in any uh, news articles, yet she is very important to me. Uh, so whenever uh, she is first mentioned, that uh, should trigger a couple of things. Uh, the, not just the recognition and linking of this entity, but also maybe populating uh, personal knowledge drop with some information that can be inferred from it. Another uh, associated role here is we don't necessarily want to perform entity linking against uh, the personal knowledge drop all the time. So think about uh, reading uh, a news article, you don't necessarily have to tap into this uh, personal uh, knowledge, but for some other use cases we do. All right. Uh, the next topic is population and maintenance. The knowledge graphs are incomplete and need updating. And this can happen from uh, external sources or can happen by our internal inferencing. But commonly, uh, there is a group of people uh, who share this responsibility, like uh, Wikipedia editors. And in case of the personal knowledge graph, there is a single curator, so everything has to go by the user which means that uh, ideally a higher level of automation would be desired. And again, this is uh, also related to issues of uh, entity linking. So whenever an entity is mentioned for the first time, we might want to trigger the population of the personal knowledge graph with that entity. The last one is uh, about integration with external sources. The problem of uh, recognizing the same entity across multiple sources is a uh, standard problem in, in databases known as uh, object resolution or record linkage. It's also been studied in the semantic web as ontology matching. Uh, but typically, it's a uh, one to one matching uh, between two separate uh, knowledge resources. Here, we want uh, one to many uh, matching, and also, we want it to be a continuous effort. So imagine that uh, uh, I move somewhere and my address changes, it would be great to be able to tell a person in the system to update my address everywhere. Uh, and also, the other way around, if one of my friends changes uh, his address, that could trigger an update uh, in my personal knowledge graph, but the user should be in control of uh, all this change. And uh, there's a lot of other things. Uh, so far, we have been working with an idealized uh, and abstract setting, and implementing it uh, brings about uh, a bunch of challenges related to you know, where should it be stored, what about privacy, uh, how can you evaluate it. Uh, those are all things uh, for thought. And I just want to highlight that uh, I used personal assistance as, a, as an example, because that is very natural. But uh, we can think of a range of other applications that we benefit from such personal knowledge. That's it.